Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here. About five days after the last one, isn't it, mate? Yeah, been a while. Got lots of eye hazards around this place here, mate. Yeah, some. Never mind. Great. Uh, so I'm having another Cosworth week this Every week. Every week's a Cosy week for you. Do you know what? The last, probably the last, I mean, we've had the, we've had the same few motors on the bench for a over a month, didn't we, really? Yeah. Um, and he, there goes times when you sort of get towards the end of them and the phone ain't rang a lot and you mm. start to sort of worry about the next lot coming in. Yeah. Worry no longer. Got them coming out our ears. We have. We've literally got about three Cosworths coming in. One's turned up today. We've got the Sierra over at Stuart's having the engine took out, the 500 spec jobby. Yeah. Um, we'll go and see how he's getting on in a bit. We're doing our one for the Mark II van, mate. Uh, we've got another two coming in. We've also had a Focus RS Mark III engine come in. And we've got a Ingenium next week. And at some point, that Subaru as well. I don't forget. You don't forget, I forget mate. Forget I nearly one. did then. No. And the look of disappointment in your eyes. No. Right, mate, onto something very thrilling and interesting Ooh. here. So this is our surface grinder, something we don't use very often. No. Big piece of equipment for doing such a small job, but it's a piece of equipment we desperately need. Well, for this and um, nonetheless. sometimes grinding shims as well. Exactly. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show a little bit of techie stuff on the thrust bearings. Or Good thrust idea. washers. Yeah. So these are for my Cos, our Cosworth for the Mark II van, mate. Not yep. that that's just what I'm working on. It's I'm just trying to well, get it to the point where you're trying to get it out the way, really. Out you? the way and off the stand because we are desperate for yes, stands. We are. These are the thrust washers for a Cosworth, which are basically the same as a Pinto. And one very interesting thing with these is, even visibly, I always think thrust washers look a bit rough, don't they? And a, yeah. and a bit non-precision mm. so bearing in mind you, you're sort of aiming for a, uh, a specific end float so the thrust washers if no one knows go on a lot of the time on like the center main cap yeah or like the rear or something it's, yeah sometimes they're built into the bearing sometimes they're separate a lot of the times they're separate like these so you've got two that go in the cap and they're the ones with the tag on the top to keep them located yep. and then you've got two plain ones without that taggle that goes into the, the block. Yeah. And all that stops them from rotating is these. Yeah. Because these can't tag. rotate because they've got the tag yeah. and the notch in the top. What a lot of people do is usually standard is absolutely fine. Um, they stick them in, check the end float at the very most. Um, we tend to aim for like four to six thou, something like that. I think the limit's like nine thou, so you sort of want to be lower than that. I try and aim for yeah. something under five thou. Perfect. Yeah. Um, you don't want to go too tight in case they sort of bind up, heat yeah. and spin, wreck the crank, oh dear, scrap mm. the block. But on these Fords, mate, if you have a look there, you can see a dull bit and you can see a shiny bit. Mm. Now the shiny bit, in, as a matter of fact, has been skimmed too thou off. Oh, so what basically. I tend to do with these, they do different size thrust, thickness thrusts. They go like two, five, ten thou. Yeah, and the reason for that is if you have to grind the thrust face on the crown um, on the crank, you obviously have to go thicker to make yeah. up the. Yeah, so it's an oversize. Yeah. Sort of bearing. What I tend to do oh, is that. use the five thou thicker than standard, um, and the reason for that is as you can see there, mate, that is with two thou off, and it is literally only touching on half the thickness of the, the thrust washer. Yeah, it's a bit odd. What are these? Uh, ACLs or something? No, these are meant to be original equipment. Uh, okay. So you would put these in, I expect most people put these in, measure the end float and think, great. Whereas well, a matter of fact, without taking two thou off, they're probably only touching on about a third of it or a quarter of the yeah, thickness so that, of it. If that was to wear away before everything else because there's less contact, and yeah. you know, more friction on that one area, then by the time it's done a thousand miles, it, you could be down to the flat bit yeah. And then and you've the got like 10,000 end floats. So. Exactly. Where I, I do know of two or three engines in the past 
that have suffered with excessive end flow, and I suspect it may be something to do with that. Yeah. What I tend to do, you've got to be careful how much you take off this because the coating isn't very thick, and obviously you've got these notches here which indicate the actual thickness. Yeah. Um, so what I tend to do is machine the back first. First of all, so, make, make sure the thing is flat. Yeah, so they've got a steel back, haven't steel they? Steel back. The first set I had was a bit bent. And you can tell that straight away. So I don't want to be putting the bent one in. No. Because that's going to just constantly be rubbing on the crank. Um, so I, I keep a few of these sets in stock just yep. so we can sort of get at least a flat set. Um, so I take a, a thou or so off the back, make sure that's flat, turn it over, and then proceed to uh, face two or three thou off so, here. So that's why you get the five thou thicker ones so that you can get them on here yep. and take some off. And get them flat. Make sure the back's flat, the front's flat. So when you put them in and you get your four thou end flow, yeah. you know that the crank is touching, touching on, on this bearing. Or using whole, all of the face. Using yeah. all of the face, mate. Because most people would just get standards, chuck them in, check well, the end flow and think, yeah, that's For right. a lot of things, it's probably fine to do that. But, yeah. And it's you know, always best. But this is where the extra time goes in yeah, things like this. This isn't is, it? you know, yeah, this is something, it's one of those things, what makes you the. YB specialist, isn't it? You know this about and these thrusts. Exactly, and, um, mate. But it's the same on most engines, really. You'd need to check it all, didn't you? So Especially if something weird's going on, like it's really tight or really this is loose. It. Yeah, sometimes you put standards in and check the end float and you've got about one or two thou and you think... What's bit, going on? Yeah, but yeah. something a bit weird there. BD. The BDE. If you do notice, we don't just have one of our wonderful customer packs with all the information in there, mate. We now have the rocker cover, which is on. Yeah. And looking... A sticker. Looking lovely. Can't beat the old BD look, can you? Yeah, it's a cool. classic. It'd look even better under the hood of that yellow Mark 1, wouldn't it? It would look good. Um, but you can see, mate, we've timed it all up. Yes. Um, so this up. is the one that has got the taper, a narrow taper on the pulleys to go onto the camshaft. So it fits on the taper, but it's got no key. In it. So no key, taper, and there's no timing marks. No. Well, there are, there are some reference marks, but they don't mean anything. Don't mean because anything. Because they can't mean anything because they ain't keyed on. Exactly. Don't mean bugger all. So what we've done, these cams in here, because this is a rally engine, the cams are actually unidentifiable. Nice. So I've measured Always on, good. and they're sort of in between anything else I can find, right. which is a bit odd. So... What I've done is set them up to 110 degrees on both because that is what Newman give on most of their camshafts. Basically it's and this of, is in um, between them. Bit of common sense. Um, Basically. So it may need the cams dialing in when yes. it's been mapped or whatever. But basically what you do, the bottom pulley is keyed, which is a good thing. Yep. So we've obviously found our TDC number one, put the dial gauge on there and got that all sorted. Um, and we've basically just put the cams with the DTI gauge, we've got 110 dead on, and then just done the nut up. And I think they give about 25 foot pound on there, which yeah, doesn't which sound like a lot, like but I suppose lot. on a narrow taper, mate, it's pulling yeah. that on there well, we, proper. We found when we had to knock one of the pulleys off again, they are quite tight quite on that taper. Yeah. Even with just 25 foot pound, it locks them on there. So exactly, so we've turned it, should it be all good. turned it round a few 360s mate and nothing touches and it all look, sounds good and feels good so that is pretty much on its way there so we've got a big order coming from Burton yeah some of which are the bits for our Cosworth but we shall go into that when they arrive which is tomorrow but other stuff is UNF UNC nuts and bolts and that for this so uh, obviously right. once I've got the cover on I sort of know now I've, I've ordered a sump bolt kit and stuff like that. Yeah. Because we don't well, tend to stop the UNF, UNC now. Well, we did have some, got a didn't few. we? But we sort of ran out and it's, haven't really needed too much It's easier it, to just go on places like Burton and just order what you need for an yeah, engine, exactly. to be fair. Yeah, exactly, all of the specific stuff. Yeah, so we got the sump back off Tom Upton. It's a bit of a homemade looking sump pan. Yeah, it's like a sump pan. dry sump job with um, a baffle in it. Yeah, we had to cut the baffle out to obviously we did. wash it properly and clean it. Yeah, so Tom's had to braise that back in. He's very braised nicely. it back in. We've given it a coat of the satin black. Yep. And that'll be going back on tomorrow. Yeah. The owner is threatening to pick it up sometime this week. Cool. Whether he does or not, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what we got going on down here, mate? The two V6s. Yes. You are the new resident V6 specialist. Yeah, seem to be. Don't know what's going on. That but... one's looking. Um... Yeah, that one sort of on hold for a minute i'm waiting on the idlers 
ordered an idler kit for the timing belt. Lovely job, Lee. Um, so waiting for those. They were an eBay job because none of our usual suppliers seem to have Oh, okay. So, oh, what, but, so we ain't got the belt kit? The one no. you was going to order with the... Yeah, I got a belt as well. Yeah. But it doesn't come with the water pump, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But it's so, getting there. Work yeah, in progress. Sort of, yeah, one of those. But the cologne... Which is looking fabulous. Is, even, even getting from, there. Even from upside down. Yeah, it's getting there. Got to find the oil pump drive. I'm sure it's in one of our cupboards, but at the minute Probably. can't seem to find it. So got to find that, put the oil pump on. Yeah. Uh, it's all timed up. This is what, this one's on the, it's like a gear setup. So yeah. it's relatively easy. Is this the one with the, the is this the one with the giant sort of nylon? Yeah, there's a big nylon. Yeah, sort of, uh, which makes it a bit quieter. Or a gear. But it's um, looking lovely, mate. I love that. Yeah, so it's, it's basically sump and oil pump. Uh, got to do the valve clearances properly. Yeah. And then there's not too much more. It's just sort of covers on. Any sort of coverings and... Fantastic. Little bits and bobs. Oh, the in intake manifold, which I've blasted now. Yeah, the customer said don't paint that. So no, blasted just blasted. It. It's looking good. Looks lovely. So we're nearly there, mate. We're nearly there, which is a good job because we've got several engines in the pipeline. Yeah. I said earlier we've got the Mark III Focus RS there. Um, the customer bought the car right. fairly cheap with a knocking noise. Mm, so smart. what we're going to find smart is... Smart way of doing that. Yeah. Um, so he, the money's well in it to do the motor. Um, so... What we're going to find in there, I don't know, mate. And over here, you see another Cosworth. Ooh, shiny cover. So we have another... We've got three or four Cosies coming in. Yeah. We've got another... I've just had a phone call earlier, actually, mate. He's sending one in. Another customer that's built the motor, a garage, but he's got strange noises and he just wants to bring it into us for us to sort it out. But anyway, this is my friend Russell's. Oh, yes. So Russell has bought this engine. Um, what he was taught, he's got a very nice Sapphire Cosworth mm. in the crystal blue, which is once that, upon a time is was that a... this colour or is that no, a different No, that one? is the... It's what they do, the Escort Cosworths in, I forget. Imperial oh, right. blue or something. It's quite nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, but no, Russell's is a crystal blue two-wheel drive Sapphire. Beautiful car. Mm. Um, once upon a time, it was an undesirable colour, but now I would say probably one, more, one of the more desirables. Yeah. But anyway, he's got a lovely engine in there running about 370 horsepower. All looking original. And, um, but what he wants to do is build a silly engine <laughs> um, with 400 odd horsepower. And he doesn't really want to take his apart because it's all matching numbers and everything. So right. So it's gone a bit anal. Of, he'll sort of take the other one out, leave it as is, all intact. Well, he did it. speak to me and he was going to sort of partly build he, he had a, a 205 500 block which he was going to build up take his head off and all this and i persuaded him leave his engine complete and mm. i mean totally complete and basically try and find another one which he's done and he so got this, this for a, an absolute steal is this a 200 or a, yeah, so this 200. is a 200 um, and this is a proper built motor so this has got big ports apparently big cams with a solid lifter setup obviously big wing sump and it's got long rods set up apparently so it's a fairly funky motor this and it was built apparently once upon a time for a caterham oh really that would have, have been yeah that would have been mental been crazy yeah what, so the um long studs and everything oh god yeah it's Christ. got all the whistles so russell's bought this one in he's bought the engine got it for an absolute steal but he wants us to just strip it out just see what it's little... like and make sure it's all right because obviously yeah. it's an unknown just check check everything just check really. it out and that's what we're going to do. That's He's bought enough. some new bits and what have you. He's got a nice T34 turbo here, which actually I was going to buy off him, but he's decided to keep it and do it himself. He sent this to Vince Lovely. at um, Turbo Performance, and they have gone through it. And this is a bit of a special turbo because it's a T34, but it's it's not the 4.8 or 6.3 rear housing. It's a 5.5. So with his me. no, so it's <laughs> sort of in the middle. Yeah. Um, very rare turbo. Very hard to get these housings now. And he's had it a bit um, bespoke -ed. So that is probably going to be good for 420, maybe nice. 430. So that'd be interesting in a rear wheel drive SAF, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, Russell has obviously bought a few goodies there to put on it, but he's also bought us, oh, it's in the box. Oh, he's it's bought me our up. turbo. So what's that, that T3? Was that it? is a T3 that was built in under a thousand miles ago. Yeah. Feels absolutely brand new. 
obviously we're going to send it away to turbo well, performance thing is it although it had been done it didn't look as good as that one for example no um, and, and i said to but yeah i said to mark at turbo performance have a look at it make sure everything's all right obviously and um i'll probably have my arm twisted fairly easy to do a billet wheel on the front run about the 350. so it's a billet because we're going to need that Billet wheel and a cosmetic upgrade. Oh yes, much. oh yes. And we're all for the cosmetic, oh, at the very we do least. Like that. Um, so yeah, cosy's everywhere at the minute, mate. Before we go, doing a little <laughs> upgrade on the Escort. Now that's why one reason I bought this car. It's the only car that I've had for quite some time that I can tinker with. Yeah, and by tinker you mean little jobs that take half hour to an hour. Constantly. Yeah, without you know you ain't got to drop the engine or. Yeah mess about too much to do anything with it exactly so one thing that was irritating me a little bit about this car although it was a characteristic of the the sort of age of the car it was a bit annoying one was the gear stick was over here and two <laughs> it was like stirring a bowl of porridge yeah it was quite nice in a way because it was very sort well, of period it, it, it and suits, yeah suits the car doesn't it but you know what i'm like mate couldn't leave it well, alone so I've gone away and bought a, was it a historic motorsport? Yeah, I think it's them. Bought a quick shifter. And even with that, mate, I couldn't leave that alone because the problem with a quick shifter is the original was like a bit of a dog leg, which yeah. come back to you and sort of, you could reach it. But whereas the quick shifter is a straight It's like stick, a short throw job. Very short yeah. throw. And because and it's not a dog together. leg, it's sort of, you're, you're having to sort of go, oh, yeah. So I've made a little bit of a, an addition to it, mate. So it's all in there. This just literally screws in to the top oh, yeah. of, the, of the gearbox. It's absolutely bloody easy to fit. So I've made a little adjustable dog leg here, mate. So I've brought it up closer to the wheel. Yep. And what a difference that's made. Yeah, it's just a lot more crisp, isn't it, that one it's now? Like, it's like an H pattern bloody like one of those Ferrari boxes, you can hear it clicking. Like, yeah. Like and it's right next manual. to the wheel. Absolutely, yeah, like a gated manual. Yeah. And it is absolutely... It is a lot a more crisp. Change. It is lovely, it's isn't it? It's just such a, like a really positive feel now with that. Yeah, and with it's obviously, lovely. with making it longer, it don't, don't just make it sort of, so it's right next to your wheel. It just gives you that little, because it is a hell of a short. Bit, yeah, it was it? short, yeah. So yeah, well happy with that, mate. Drove it last night, made a massive difference. Yeah. So yeah, love this car. Keep saying it, won't stop saying it. It's brilliant though, it's good. And I hope the van's just as much fun. Yeah. But probably a bit ridiculous. Well, the van's a bit more of a, bit of a showpiece really, isn't it? Yeah, bit of a it is, yeah. Crazy thing where this is. In the next few videos, mate, or the next couple of weeks, we're gonna have a big change of scenery in there with a load more new engines. Hopefully, a bit more interesting stuff in there and Get some it? techie stuff, maybe some techie. engines stripped down. And I think so. All that sort of, sort of stuff. People keep crying out for the old um, time lapse, don't they? Yeah, I don't know whether a time lapse is. I think we're going to have to do one. We can do a time lapse. We'll do a time lapse, but it's, yeah, I think we'll leave it there, mate, innit? Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you in another one. Cheers. Oh.